Hi guys, today I thought we'd do my bonnet, uh, probably about the fourth, fifth coat on the bonnet, but today, um, before we start, I'd like to show you the progress of what we made yesterday. We did the door, driver's door yesterday, and uh, I just thought I'd show you the results. And then, that's how it is now, up to now. And this one is what it was like yesterday before we started. You see the difference in the reflection. Reflection is not as good. So I'm going to rub that down, same as that one. And then we should. Oops, you can just see me. Uh, where will I get a reflection if I can? Can you see me on? Yeah, there it is. And that's about hmm, 18 inches, two foot away. Something like that. So... That's the sort of results you can get. I mean, I can get it better than that probably if I do another few more coats. But, uh, see how it goes. But I'll uh, just move the doors and get the bonnet ready for preparing it for painting. Right now we've got the bonnet set up on the bench, makeshift bench. It's an old door, by the way. If you're wondering, um, we're going to be using 1200. Silicon wet and dry and 2500 to smooth it off afterwards. In a bucket of hot water, clean with some um, detergent like washing up liquid type stuff just to make it a bit more lubricant. Over there, which you can't see at the moment, is my cook pot with my paint in it. There, my old cook pot just to warm it up. I put boiling water in but left it to simmer over just to keep it warm so that's the shine up to now which isn't bad I suppose but I want to try and get it better so what we're going to do is rub it down and we're going to use a three inch paintbrush which is nice and soft right so I was reading up about um, coach painting and the thing I read was that the old guys used to strip off to their underwear and coat the bodies with linseed oil to stop dust particles and, and um, skin particles dropping on the job when they'd done it. And they were the only ones allowed in to like a wooden shed, if you like, like our spray booth today, I suppose, but it was like an old wooden shed and used to hose pipe it down with water first so the dust wouldn't float about. And when the, stop, the drips had stopped, they used to go in and do the, the coach painting. But the coach painting in them days used to have their own mixtures. And the similar idea to what I'm doing now, warming it up, but they used to put it on Bunsen burners or flames, um, candles, which I wouldn't recommend it, highly inflammable. And uh, they used to add linseed oil to it and turps and all sorts of things, their own concoctions. But the, it's not the same um, mixture these days it's more synthetic which is very close it's make it more safe for people to use anyway so what we're going to do now is rub it down so i've learned me a lesson yesterday i moved the camera so it'll it won't shake and just rub it up and down nice and gently i'm also some of you get you guys out there think i should use a block but i've been taught the old way donkey's years ago i'm the old school and this is how they used to teach me when I was spraying cars 40 odd years ago. And this is so you can feel the paint. Never used um, electric tools where I used to work. Never believed in it, all by hand, everything. It was hard work, but you soon learn how to do things and get the proper results. I've not done it for, like I say, about mm, 35 years, maybe more. So I'm new to it, same as you guys out there. All right, I've got a little bit of knowledge, not a lot, not a great deal. It's just what you pick up over the years. All I'm, all I'm doing here is just flattening it off, getting, the sh getting rid of the shine so it's nice and smooth. You'll see this in a bit. You can use um, 1500, anything really, but it just takes a bit longer. I prefer to use 1200 
my personal thing. You don't have to do it that way. As long as you get the results. The main thing is you don't go right through the paint. If you do, you'll end up back at square one. You've got to start again. So it's just nice and gently, hardly any pressure. Let the uh, paper do the work. Let the wet and dry do the work. All you're doing is moving it about. You're the power source, if you like. So, nice and gently. And when it comes to ridges like that, or sharp edges, be very careful, because you'll go right through. So you've got to be very, very gentle there. And you want it, as it used to say, like a baby's bum. Which I've never understood that, but... Most people understand what you mean when you say that, for some reason, I don't know. But, uh, just rub it back, like that, all over. You can see the shine going, which is ideal of what I want. Most people think, whoa, what are you doing? You've ruined it. No, you haven't, because everything is fixable. Nothing's ruined on this. Nothing's ruined on this job at all. You can just go over it, repaint it. Well, as I said in the forums, I was, I was quoted £4,000 to £8,000 for a straight nine minute, which is in two pack, which in my opinion doesn't look right, it's too bright, too... This gives it a bit of depth, like the old cellulose, I think it should be. And for 350 quid, it's worth the effort. And the paint you're left over with, if somebody scratches it, or you're in a car park and somebody dings it, Instead of sending it in to be repaired in the, in the um, garage, costing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds, you can do it yourself. A panel like this will cost you about 15 quid maybe to do it yourself, probably less, because you'll have paint left over. You don't have to rebuy your paint, you've already got some. So this to me is really ideal. I'm sorry about the camera shake, you're probably still getting some there. It's the floor it's on. It's a makeshift bench I've got. So. Just what I had in the garage really to make up because I've got stuff everywhere in here. Right, cluttered up. I keep saying I'll get it round to clean it up, but I've not done it yet. Right now I'm switching down to 2500. I'll just give it a quick wipe first. Just give it a quick wipe over the cloth. You can see it coming off there, see it? On the cloth. That's what you want, that's what you're aiming for. Could do with a new cloth really, but there you go. It'll do what I'm doing. Just rub it back like that. Get all the sludge off it. And then we're ready to start again. But for now, we're going with 2,500. And this, don't cut it as much. So it will do if you press hard, obviously, but if you just go over the top, all you're doing is taking out the little bits of blobs or imperfections, if you like. It's a pity you can't feel it here. It's like glass. Brilliant. Really, really brings it up. With hardly any effort. When you're doing it, you rub it all over. Give it a little bit of it. Yeah, when it's quoted at 4,000 to 8,000 pounds, he said it without laughing, and I thought it was a joke. I thought, 8,000 quid? He said, well, it depends how good you want it. That's all, I want it right. I said, but for 8,000, it would have to be like a bloody Rolls Royce. In fact, I don't think Rolls Royce charge that much. I have to find out that, how much they charge. I bet it's not far off, and you're getting a proper job off them. Did you know that Rolls Royce is? Up into the 70s, I believe, were done this way. Hand painted with uh, enamel paint. It's all the story of gold, I don't know how true it is, I've not researched it or anything, but that's what I've been told. Maybe you guys out there know better than I do, I don't know. Or you've heard different. I know they still do the uh, pinstriping by hand, which I don't understand that, but you can get a, you can get a, a bugler, is it? A bugler to do the same job. Does it turn out the same or not? I don't know. I suppose it's saying it's been done by hand. 
much the difference in it. So that's that's that. Do not wipe it off. The paint's cooking away. It's not bubbling yet. <laughs> no, you don't want it to bubble. So it's nice and hot or warm, above warm. So it's, you can put your fingers in it. So it won't burn. You don't want it too hot. And that's that's the bonnet done. We've just got to wait for it to dry now. And we'll be back in a bit. So now it's fully dry, I'm going to go over it now with a pack cloth. It's like a sticky cloth, this, it picks all the bits up. And all you do, gently wipe it all over. Make sure there's nothing stuck to it. It's still really dry now. And it's ready for paint. Just a quick more over the top. Make it double short. There's no greasy marks on it anywhere. So, right, now, in, me, in my slow cooker, which is over there, I showed you before, that's the paint I'm using, Old English White Craftmaster. And added to that, I've got 10% of that that they supply. Well, you buy it, obviously. But that's what they recommend to put with it. You don't put turps with it whatsoever. No turps, no thinners, just this stuff. Otherwise you'll ruin the consistency of the paint. Alright, so what we'll do now is I'll get full of paint here. Um, I've got it all over me already. Off the tin lid. <laughs> so, just wipe that off. And then we're nearly ready. Right. Oh, I'm gonna, we need to Take the tin out and dry it, the bottom of the tin. Just bear with me a second. Let's get this sorted and then I can show you. It's lovely and hot this now. It is hot as well, the tin. Stir it up and it's like that. Can you see it? Yep. So what we'll do now is, apart from getting full of paint that is off the tin lid, get it all over me. Right, now I've dipped the brush in turps and wiped it, just to give it a, some sort of primer if you like, that's my, my thing. Next, we just drip it in that much, that's all, you don't get it wet through. Start in the corner, and just quick, quick applying it, quick nice and quick. I'm going to do one half of the bonnet to start with. I'm not going to go right across because that would be too much. Now this would be all right to do it in one go if you had two people, one following you around, but we haven't so I'm doing it on my own. Just keep applying it, not too much, I don't want it running everywhere. Spread it out, that's the key to it, spreading it out. And the nice warm paint just flows. A bit there. Some somewhere. Probably off my head. Still there. Come out. Little bugger. That's it. Gone. Like I say you've got to be fairly quick. Just make sure you've coated it all over. Go both ways, make sure you've coated it and then come back towards yourself, nice and gently, hardly touching the paint, hardly touching it. Some more, but you've got to overlap it wet in wet, that's the technique. So what you've just finished on there, you go back over it, but not right along to back where you started because you'll ruin it. Start at the back end there, at the other end, you started to dry already, so you've got to be very careful you don't 
do too much at once. And then, that's all my breath when I'm doing this. But you'll see it sort of merging together. I have to do the other side now. Now the reason I'm not starting in the corner here is because that's wet, if you like, and it's well, it's damp. It's not as wet as, it, as, as you, you'd like it to be, really. So you've got to be very gentle with that uh, area over here. Just go zigzags everywhere, yeah. All different directions. It was somebody that pointed it out to me actually to go one way, which I do anyway, but I just didn't think to say in the last videos, unfortunately. And you're just going over the top now, gently. You can see it there drying, can't you? Just caught it in time then I think. Plus if you think your paint's um, cooling down too much you can always put it back in and come back to the next half if you want to do it that way I suppose. And just nice and gently feather it off. It's called tipping this apparently. I used to call it feathering. That's what my dad told me years ago. It's called feathering. Feather it out. Oops, a couple of drips there, but not to worry. Not to worry. Don't panic. The thing is about this, you don't panic. Whatever you do wrong, you can always fix it the next day. Like I say, it's not rocket science. You don't have to be Leonardo da Vinci to paint it or anything like that. Just common sense basically and knowing how to do it and this is the way to do it. In one respect I'm going to be sorry it's finished because I'll, I'll enjoy, I enjoy painting it. <laughs> and that is as they say is that I think, yep. One little bit there on it, bit of dust or crap. Another one. I've got the garage door open see, so you can see. But obviously you'd be doing it in a closed space, I think. Now guys, how's that? What do you think? Not bad, is it? Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you again soon, next thrilling installment. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Any quick well, by the way, any questions you want to ask, please do so. Oh, and I'm also on YouTube, uh, Steve Hewitt, Mini Owner. Yeah, thank you very much. And this is it after 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Not bad shine, is it? Not at all. Very pleased with that. I hope you guys have a go. Like I say, it's not rocket science. It's quite easy, really. Just a question of not putting too much paint on and just knowing. By the time you put your undercoats on, you get used to what the paint will do and what it won't do, really. Like I say, you only do the top coat, heat it up. The rest of it you don't. You just put it on just neat out the tin. The first top coats, if you like. So the last two or three you put uh, heated up and thinned up, I do anyway, that's where I've done it. And I've got fairly good results on that I think. I think looking at this, it's better than some of these new cars I've seen. Some of the orange peel I've seen, that was unbelievable for a brand new car. But, there you go. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.